All right, welcome everybody. This is Chris Record, and today is day three. Today is day three of the 90 day challenge, and today's topic is going to be setting up your Shopify store. Now, I'm going to go and do a beginner overview. We're going to do something that basically is just a really like nice overview of Shopify. We're going to go through the different sections, we're going to walk through this. Um, I won't be able to answer every single question. Again, this is just the third day of 90, but I will do my best to be able to help beginners uh, right now to be able to get started. So for those of you that are watching live, you should be able to go to the 90 day challenge and you should be able to go into the group here, the 90 day challenge group, and you should be able to see the live training. You can see here we're live, people are starting to jump on as we just went live right now. Day three, look for the 90 day challenge day three. If you're watching the replay, uh, you should be watching this right now. Let me know in the comments, um, you know, does audio and visual show up good for everyone? And let me know just to make sure I don't go too far without that much more. So what I'll do is open this up in a new tab and we will get started. This should be a little bit fun. Okay, people are starting to jump on. Awesome. So let me know, comment in, see if you can find it here and ready to go. Here we go, baby. Everybody's excited. I want to make sure everything's good. We're going to kick this thing off. So on... Um, I want to show you guys a couple things as we start off for those of you that are following along over here in the file section. Now, of course, if you're on like day 40 or day 50 or day 60, this might have changed by now. But over here in the file section, you should be able to find the 90 day challenge notes and replays. And if you click that, this is where we'll be able to, um, you know, essentially build this document out for right now. We've got it here. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to have somebody from our staff go in and really build this document out as we get further along really taking the highlights, the core topics, the notes and whatnot. Um, but for right now, you should be able to click on this 90 day Ecom challenge notes. And that should bring up this document here. Okay. And um, let me actually on the top, I'm going to edit it in real time. Okay. I'm going to put up here on the top, uh, scroll down to the bottom to get the most recent, uh, to get the most recent day, most recent training notes. Okay. I'm going to put that right there on the top, scroll down to the bottom. Because, um, let me put that there, da, 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 da. All right, so let me make that black, let me do highlight, I'm doing this in real time right in front of you guys, because a lot of people are asking, where is it? Uh, let me make this maybe a little bit smaller, okay, let's make it even smaller. Okay, scroll down to the bottom to get that. The reason is because a lot of you might not know, um, so you can kind of go through, there's day one notes, uh, look at all these notes, how cool is that? And here's day two notes, you can see it go through all the print on demand stuff and all these notes and examples and stuff like that. Now, here's 90 day challenge day three notes. And so this is where we're going to be today. Okay. So what I'm going to do today is going to be um, less notes, more of a tour. So watch the video and follow along. Okay. Um, I might pop into this document from time to time to give examples. Okay. I don't know what I'm going to do today. Okay, but I, I do know I'm going to just basically go through and show a Shopify store. So again, that's where you find it. It should be right up there in the files. Then, for those of you that are also looking for videos, another way that you can find the videos, you go here to the videos section and you can look for the videos. Um, you know, here's one that's an hour and a half. This one's live right now, so it shows four hours, but that's just because it's live. You see this one, here's an hour and a half. That's day two training. If you hover your mouse over it, if you're on desktop, it says day two training, how to add print on demand. Over here, here's day one training. Um, exactly what to do. We'll update the titles, stuff like that. So there's day one, day two, day three. So you also can find the videos here in the video section of the group. Okay. That being said, um, you, who's excited? Let me know in the comments, you know, let me know in the comments. Here we are day three. Who's excited? I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to be reading the comments as we go. Okay. That was the introduction and people obviously are still pouring on. We're going to have hundreds and hundreds, eventually thousands of people watch this with the replays. Okay. Everybody says it looks great. Video's great. All right. That's enough social proof. Let's go ahead and get started. So um, today we are going to focus on Shopify setup. Okay. If you guys do not have a Shopify store, I don't know what you're waiting for. <laughs> okay. You should have one. Go to shopify.com forward slash techademics. Um, people that want to participate in the challenge, people that want to participate with tech, uh, Shopify extended a seven day trial and 50% off for three months as well as several other things that are not even mentioned here that Shopify is extending to us. So you definitely, if you don't have a store, you want to get one and you're going to need a store to be able to participate. When you go set up a store, 
You start here with an email address, a password, and a store name. This store name becomes your subdomain. So like if I was to choose, you know, Chris Record Rocks, okay, it says yes. And when I go to create my store, my store is going to be Chris Chris-Record-Rocks.MyShopify.com. So whatever you choose here is obviously going to be that. So many of you have what's called a store name. You put a store name here and Shopify gave you a URL, okay? So, um, you know, so let's, let's look at some of this. Like you must... Let's get some bullet points started so we can kind of go through and kind of walk through basic and we're going to get bigger. You must have a Shopify store and be an admin to benefit from this training. Okay, I'm going to show you the admin area. Okay, when you, when you set up a store, you choose a store name, that becomes your username. Okay, let me make this unbold so it doesn't be crazy. Okay. So, you must have a Shopify store, be an admin. When you set up a store, you're going to choose a store name. That becomes your username. For example, if your store name is Chris Record General Store, then your store URL would likely be Chris Record General Store.myshopify.com. Okay? That's kind of how it works, okay? Don't worry, you can always purchase a domain name and map it to your store. Then your domain name could become chrisrecordgeneralstore.com, okay? This is how you can begin to brand your own store. So username, doesn't matter. So those of you that chose a username, just signing up and you're worried about it, I saw several comments about that. It doesn't matter because you can basically buy your own domain name and map it to your store. So in a previous training, we've gone to Google and we've taught you how to do a site search to be able to search for all Shopify stores. You do site colon myshopify.com. This is on the previous trainings. You guys should get good at this. 14,500,000 results. So look at this, funky and chunky. Funky, see their, their name, their name is Funky and Chunky, so their username is Funky in Chunky dot my .com. That's their store name, right? So, but if you go, if you click on it, look what happens here. They've mapped a domain name to it. So it is now Funky in Chunky dot co. See, so you don't, even though it showed up in those search results, when people go to their store, this is the actual name they're branding. There's their logo, and that's the actual name that they're branding right there. Okay, so because of that, you don't need to worry so much about whatever your username was. This right here is what your people are going to be able to see, this funkyandchunky.co. So this is really, you want to, what I want to do today is I want to show you basically, let's walk through Shopify, let's walk through the admin area, and let's talk about um, my, mapping a domain name and stuff like that. Okay, let's talk about getting your site set up. We're going to give a tour, we're going to give an overview. So don't worry if you're new and you feel like you've made a mistake, my main point I want to get across is don't worry there's no mistake that you need to go start all over or change everything it's gonna be okay okay so assuming you've signed up no matter what it was you've created your store you've you've selected a plan you should be okay now in this example I'm gonna use um, this store right here which is sort of like a, a test kind of student store there it's not completely test there has been some real product sales on here so I wanted to use a store that has some real product sales so you can see um, some activity, but nothing too crazy that like I'd be worried about showing you, you know, anything that like, you know, I don't want you to see, right? So I've got to use a store that's not too big and too viral where everybody's going to copy everything. But at the same time, I didn't want to use a brand new store. I want to use a store with some action on it. And by the way, in the comments, how many people are excited that I'm going to use an actual store right now and walk you through an actual store with actual track record? actual results as part of this training. Is anybody, let me know if you guys are excited about seeing a real store, seeing real results. Because that's always kind of what I wished um, somebody would show me, you know? So, like a store that's actually got sales coming in, visitors coming in, stuff like that. Okay, now I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put a disclaimer here that because I'm doing this live, there might be some sections of this store that I don't feel comfortable diving into. Like I don't mind showing you the customers tab, but to be honest, I'm not gonna dive in there 
and start going around and showing you that because there's going to be some customer data in there that I'm not going to feel comfortable showing you. Um, I hope you guys understand that. Like, I'm, we, we can do that at another time. What we'll do is we'll set up a brand new store, kind of like just go through some of the basics. I thought today would be a little bit better since there's a mixed variety of beginners and intermediate people here to use an existing store. But keep in mind, it's not going to be a complete thorough thing because I don't want to share private data. Okay. Um, but, but look, over 6,000 orders to the site. So there's going to be at least, this is what you guys should go for. Okay. So with that being said, let's go ahead and kick off this training. So what you're looking at right now is you're logged into your Shopify admin area, okay? You're logged in your Shopify admin area. Um, when you set up your Shopify store, you're able to come in here and you're able to log in. Now, when you first come in, this is called your dashboard, your home dashboard. That's the screen we're on. Your dashboard is going to basically give you a snapshot of some stats. Over here, it's going to give you a snapshot of some stats. Then it's going to give you some like urgent things like here's a bunch of orders that have come in that need to be fulfilled. Um, here's um, more information about an order and here's more information about a few orders, okay? So you can kind of go in and you can kind of view these, these things individually and you can see, um, you know, see what, what you might need to change for stuff like that. Now, scroll down and, and Shopify is always going to be adding stuff like this. Feel free to do these if you want. You know, how do you, how do you stack up to other stores in your entity? Tell us a little bit more about yourself. You could go in here and kind of say like jewelry, submit and then it goes away. So Shopify is always collecting information and feedback from people. Okay, so you can participate in those one if you, if you want. So someone from Johannesburg got in South Africa recently visited your online store. Here's where they spent their time. So here's another thing that shows that they they spent their time on the home ba home page, the earbuds and headphones um, collection, uh, this hot item rhinestone pearl neck uh, necklace. Three minutes and thirty two seconds there. New colors and then back to the home page, and then this two-piece canvas guitar wall art. So some, this kind of gives you an idea, like a snapshot of what's going on. Now, anytime you want, you can dismiss these messages. So if you don't want to see them, you can always dismiss them. So, so first things first, they're always giving you information about what your customers are doing. This is pretty cool. And if you have a new site, you don't see this. So that's why I wanted to show you existing sites. So this kind of tells you where people are spending their time. These customers are expected to spend the most at your store. You know, you kind of start to see Use a discount code to encourage them to make your next purchase. So you kind of see, you know, people have come in and, and multi, there's a whole report of people that have spent multiple orders, how much money they're spending, kind of showing you like people that you might want to spend some time with. These products are being added to the cart the most uh, in the last 14 days. 76 times this was added, seven times this was added, six times this was added. And there's obviously more products that if you keep going down. So this kind of tells you where some ac action is going. Um, there's a tutorial video. These products are getting the most views and it kind of shows you like how many views they're getting, um, whether it's up or down and the change and whatnot. Um, is this card useful and get some feedback? And you can go in, it's telling you, okay, edit your shipping settings, uh, double check your tax rates, make sure they're good, more a blog post. Um, they're recommending, they're shooting an app at you and recommending you might want to check out that app. Um, you know, and you could go in and it's telling you, hey, you might want to check out Facebook pixels and add them. It's telling you there's a new, uh, a new feature here you can have, a new blog post. You see, it's kind of like a dashboard where Shopify is feeding you information. You can add a buy button to other stores on the web. You could do this. You could blah, 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 blah. Shows traffic, where it's coming from, you know, um, views from Facebook or Google or Bing. Um, visitors from this site had the lowest chance. So this, this one's not doing um, Instagram, not much Instagram. So it kind of gives you all this. Okay, that's the dashboard. That's like a two-minute version of the dashboard. Over here on the right, you've got your hot products, um, your payout schedule, what's going on. And the deal is, is that this is, this is a store that the started as a general store and now is being niched out. So you're going to see a store that had a lot of volume but is now being niched out. So what happens is you might want to start as a general store, find items that are selling well, and then based on that, you might want to create a niche store to, to dial in. And so that's what's happening here. You're seeing a main store that did 6,000 orders that's now kind of just, just relying on organic traffic while it's being niched out. And there's actually going to be niche stores created from this. It's part of a plan to grow this from 6,000 to 60,000. And that's an advanced strategy. We'll talk about that later. But if anybody's wondering why this store doesn't have the volume it used to have, it's because it's converting over to um, niches inside of each of these uh, individual paths that we have here. Okay. So you've got these, so that's the home dashboard. Here's home, then you've got 
sections on orders, products, customers, reports, discounts. Then you have sales channels. Then down here you have apps and settings. And then of course you have um, some personal information here. So let's go through all these and then let's go through each one. So down here on the bottom, you've got the name of the, of the store and you've got your profile that you're logged in. You can go in here and you can edit your stuff and you can get some help and some, um, you can find out where, what are some keyboard shortcuts if you want to start moving faster. So that's what's in this section right there. Okay, then you've got, let's, let's go, you've got settings and if you see the little arrow, that means that you can click on it and it'll open up a bunch of sub accounts, okay? That's what settings are. So as you see here now, these things become icons, right? So when, when you open up something here, I'm on desktop. These, these become little icons. You hover over if you want to see them again. So that's settings. That means that there's a sub-navigation menu. So you see that customers, it's just going to show you customers. But reports, it's going to show you there's a sub-navigation menu, a sub-navigation, sub-navigation. Okay, that's what those mean. So this little icon here is if you want to view your online store at any time, you can click that. It'll open your online store up in another window. Um, It'll kind of open it up so you can kind of see your store and what your store looks like and whatnot. Okay, this is what that store looks like. Pretty basic template, of, you know, free template. It's pretty simple. Okay, so let's go through. Settings, you know, one of the first areas people want to go in is they want to go into general, payments, checkout, shipping, taxes, and go through all of this. Okay, so when you're first setting up a store, you know, you go over here to settings and you go into general. And you're gonna basically put whatever store name you want for the public. You can put an email and a, and a customer email. Um, if you have a domain name like at GoDaddy, it's not that difficult to set up an email. Um, and you can actually just set up, wh what I like to do is I like to set up a Gmail address and then just forward this email. GoDaddy is the one that I use. GoDaddy provides email forwarding. So you can go and you can set up you know, an email at your domain name and then forward it to this one. So. You know, that way your customers will see this address and, you're, and, and we will use this address if we need to contact you. So I usually use a Gmail address here and a custom address there. If you're better with domain names and emails, then you want to use maybe this one for both of them. But this is free to set up email, what's called email forwarding. You go to GoDaddy. This is called email forwarding. You just put support at whatever domain you bought and it's usually uh, free for you to do that. Then you're going to go in and put whatever your address information is. Um, and you know, go in here and choose pounds and whatever. It should default right, but if it doesn't, this is what you should get it to look like. Okay, so then you're gonna go over to payments, and um, generally speaking, you can, you, know, you can really go to town on this if you want, okay? I'm, not, I'm just gonna focus on beginners here. So if you're intermediate or advanced, you can kind of figure this out. The two types of payments you really want uh, to at least start with is PayPal and Shopify payments powered by Stripe. Now. PayPal and Shopify payments, um, this allows people to check out like kind of like with credit card, like it's normal through your site. They don't really see Shopify payments. It just looks like they're paying with a credit card. Okay, that's kind of what it really looks like. So an example, if we go here to Lust House, we go to like a section like earbuds and headphones or whatever. We go to a, go to a product like this and we go, okay, I want to get the blue one and I want to add it to the cart. Okay, there's the shopping cart. And then if the customer checks out, um, this is the normal type of a situation here, right? So what can happen is they can pay via PayPal right here, and this will redirect them and have them log into PayPal to pay. And this is because PayPal can collect all your information. Your information is already stored with PayPal. So it's nice and convenient. People that have PayPal can pay. Or they can enter in all their information here, and then they're going to choose shipping. It'll put in a shipping total, uh, and then they can pay with a credit card there. So there's really kind of two ways. They can basically pay PayPal or just go through the normal, the normal way there. That's generally speaking the two things you want to use. Um, and for sake of simplicity and time, um, you've already seen us do trainings on this before. We'll do more over the course of the 90 days to get more specific in that. But you essentially just can go in and can sign up for a PayPal account and sign up for this. Now you can always change them. So I can always go in here. If you feel like in the beginning you're like, I don't really know if I set it up right or what I'm doing. You know, you can always go in and change it. As long as you can accept payments, you can do a test order. As long as it works, you'll be fine. And these are the two areas. So go in here and put those together. Now, we do have um, on, on the site uh, Ecom Tutor and in, during the 90-day challenge, we have this whole entire step-by-step -step checklist on setting this up. So if, you're, if you don't have that, you will receive that as part of being in the group. And if you guys have any questions regarding these, you can always... Uh, 
ask them in the group and other members will help you with very specific details. Like I know some of you might be international and wondering how that works, those kind of questions. Use the Facebook group, use this group here, the 90 day challenge group to be able to get information about how to answer those questions. But this is what you wanna do. Start by setting up these two and editing them, make sure it looks good. Your checkout page, um, you know, what you wanna do is you wanna have accounts are optional. So did you notice when I went to this checkout page, um, there's this thing that members can have accounts, you know, what they, what they could do is when they put in all this stuff, they can actually create an account with you. Well, a lot of sites force you to create an account. But if, we, if, you have to, if a member has to have an account with your store in order to buy stuff, then you're going to lose a lot of business. There's a lot of people that are going to want to check out anonymously. They're not going to want to create an account with the Lust House or whatever the name of your business is. So you want to make it optional. You do not want to force them to have to do this, okay? You do not want to go in here and say accounts are required because if you go in here and say accounts are required, I don't know if it's going to do it in real time. We'll, we'll press save and show you. Um, we'll see if it's just going to do it in real time. It might not. Okay, there you go. Like accounts are required and now it's, it's requiring them to, to look what's going to happen. Like they're going to go. I think let's go in real time and show you. Let's go try to buy this. Let me refresh to make sure it works. If accounts are required, then somebody's going to click here and they're going to want to buy this, add to cart, and they're going to want to go check out and they got a couple items there and look what it's going to do. Do you see how this could cause um, a lack of conversions? So if you have accounts required, it's going to force your customers to have to log in. So this could be a reason why maybe you're not getting a lot of sales if you have something like that. So you don't want to make accounts required, okay? You want to make them optional. Accounts are optional. So see, now we're going to press optional. And when accounts are optional, then what happens when they go and they add this to their cart and they go over here to check out? It's going to take them to a page where they can check out, okay? So you're going to, you're going to want to have, um, and if you're wondering why the price is going up, it's because each time I'm doing this, it's adding a new product. So you're going to want to have accounts optional. So these, these things are kind of like, you're going to go through and you're going to look at this. Um, you know, remember me can be enabled. That's fine. It can remember stuff. You can go in here and just kind of decide what you want. You know, you can look at these options if you just want to copy, you know, require first and last name. Company name can be optional. Address line two can be optional. Phone number can be optional. So generally, you want to, what, what most people do is they generally make all this optional, but they like to require first and last name. <laughs> and then as far as order processing, you know, use the shipping address as the billing address by default. That helps. Um, reduces the number of fields required to check out. So that's obvious. You want to make it as easy as possible, okay? If the customer abandons their checkout, send them an email reminder an hour later, recommended. Um, ask for permission to send promotional emails to customers. By default, customer agrees. So what that is, is right here. See how this is checked? Subscribe to our newsletter. This is automatically checked right here by default, um, which, which basically gives you permission to email them. By having this agreed, you're essentially getting permission to be able, when, when somebody's checking out, or even if they abandon the cart process, they might fill all this out, but then they see that, you know, the shipping is too expensive and they don't do it, but they're subscribing to your email list. So generally, most people will tend to have this set to, they agree to receive emails from you. After an order has been paid, um, automatically fulfill the order lines items, automatically fulfill only the gift cards, do not automatically fulfill. So... You can set this to do not or just gift cards. We'll go and we'll do a whole training on gift cards separately. But the main reason we're not doing this automatically fulfill is because we're using drop shipping. Most of us are using drop shipping and you're going to need to manually go to, let's say, AliExpress and fulfill that order. So you don't want to check that because you don't have the, um, you don't have it set. Automatically archive the order. Now, don't worry about this code right here. Um, there's additional scripts. There's, we'll have to get, this is like advanced stuff. Don't get into this, but there's going to be from time to time, you'll get on like a webinar with us and we'll show you like what are called Shopify hacks, way that you can hack Shopify and kind of do some cool stuff. And what'll, what'll happen is a trainer will say, Hey, here's a script that you can copy and paste. And that's what we'll do from time to time is we'll create some scripts like this that have all kinds of stuff and Facebook pixel codes and whatnot. We'll, we'll help create some stuff like that for right now. It's not needed. I mean, We'll, we sometimes build stores into the hundreds of thousands without any scripts in them. So you don't need them. But as you become, as you start selling, 
you're going to be looking for like cool little hacks and don't worry you'll never need to know what any of this means you'll never need to write it all it'll be you'll copy it from somewhere and you'll paste it in here when the time comes right now don't worry about it that's that um, the storage checkout page is in English because that's where we're doing most of our selling um, you've got a refund privacy TOS statements now what you have is you have the ability to generate these sample refund policies sample privacy policy so what you're going to do when you're first starting is you're going to generate these samples, okay? So after you fill in your information, you're going to generate this. When you generate it, it's going to add like your name, okay, into these sample documents. So um, these documents are going to be automatically created. Now, I am not going to give you legal advice. I am not a licensed person to give you legal advice. I do not practice law. So it is not my business to tell you how to write your refund policy, your privacy policy, and your terms of service policy. What I would suggest to you is generate the samples and just go through them and see if they make sense, okay? So like go through this refund um, policy and you know what you also might wanna do is here's another thing that a lot of people are doing. They'll go to other popular sites, okay? And they'll go through and they'll, they'll go through and look at sites that might be selling. Let's go back to, um, Google, they'll go to like my Shopify. They'll go look and they'll go see a, a site like this. They'll go look through. Maybe you find a site that's selling a lot. And then what you'll do is you'll go through and you'll look at some of their documents, like their terms of service or their privacy policy. And you can click on it and you can actually like see what they do. So if you're, if you're ever kind of like, I'm not saying that it's legally the best thing to do is, is to copy somebody else. You know, obviously, legally, the best thing that everybody in the world should do is consult with a licensed professional. But, you know, when you're new, that costs money. And sometimes people are unable to do that. So you're going to have to make your own decision. What most members do, whether it's the best thing or not, is most members use the gener generated sample policies. And they, um, and they go and they look at what other people are doing and kind of get ideas. Because when you look at a bunch of other people's sites, you might come across a big site that has like a really cool refund policy and you might model after it, okay? So like you might go to like, what, even something in your niche, like Pitbull Necklace, you might actually go find like another site, let's say, and maybe you go and you look at this, and generally what people will do is they'll go down and they'll, they'll see if they can find something about their refund policy or anything like that and go, and go learn about it. Now, sometimes it's easy to find the refund policy because sometimes it's just gonna be sitting right there um, as a link in the, in the footer. Other times you can kind of see it when you're checking out, so you can just kind of go through and you can look at, look at the links and you can kind of see if they have anything about their refund policy or any items like that. Sometimes they're easy to find, sometimes they're not. Uh, you just kind of go on a case-by-case -case basis. So I don't want to get much more into this except that um, look what even Shopify says. These sample templates are not legal advice and by using them you agree to this disclaimer. So all I can do as a trainer is the same thing Shopify is doing, which is like, hey, you can generate these and use them as a sample template and agree here. So use your own judgment there. Most members are definitely generating sample policies and going through and making sure it looks good, especially the refund policy. They just want to make sure it looks, um, you know, make sure they review it. Okay? Don't spend hours and hours and hours on this. And if you are an extra cautious person, of course, go talk to somebody that has legal advice. But if you're trying to save money, most people do that. Okay. So that's the whole checkout section. Um, shipping. Let's go over here to shipping. Now, you know, shipping origin, a lot of times you're going to be um, either using print on demand or drop shipping. So this is not as applicable. And then there's zones and rates. Okay, so let's kind of talk a little bit about this and let's talk a little bit about um, shipping rates. Now, um, let's go in the notes to talk about this. Let's go into shipping. Shipping, uh, sh shipping section um, explained. Okay. Uh, there's this is very very beginner explanation okay some of you that are advanced are gonna think okay this is way too beginner but you know I've got to bring everybody along it's what, what we do right so very beginner explanation is that there's generally generally two options for shipping rates okay generally okay I'm not trying to I'm not trying to box anybody in anything here there's generally gonna be um, you know, it, let's go. Let's go look at it. Okay. There's generally when you go to edit these uh, these shipping zones. There's generally weight based and price based. See this price based and weight based. So if you go over here, there's generally price based shipping. 
and weight-based shipping, okay? Now, price-based shipping is often the most popular for traditional small business owners who have inventory and are handling shipping themselves. And I'm gonna put it like this, I'm gonna put asterisks, like uh, generally speaking. I don't want to get into a debate over shipping. What I, my goal is, is I want to get into what beginners should do. Just to, I'm trying to like sift through the advanced world of e-commerce and make it very, very, very simple. So price-based shipping is generally, if you're like a small business, mom and pop shop, you've got inventory, you're going to be shipping it to people who order from your website. You know, you're going you're gonna to have like shipping labels, you're going to be shipping it out, you're going to have price-based shipping because you know, like the more something is, the more it's going to be. Now, weight-based shipping is a little bit different, and, 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 and this generally different. Now, listen, generally speaking, do some small businesses have weight-based shipping? Yes. Is this even anything to worry about? No. I could erase this whole thing and you'd be fine. Weight-based shipping, weight-based shipping is often the most popular method for uh, sellers who use drop shipping and have another company fulfill the order for them. Okay, and again, I'll put tons of stars, like uh, many others use this too, okay? Many others use this method too, okay? I don't wanna get in, I don't wanna get into a debate. Hopefully you guys understand, right? I'm trying to teach the masses in the Shopify challenge how to work with drop shipping and print on demand so I'm giving you a very beginner explanation that there's weight-based shipping and there's price-based shipping. And so watch this. So which one should m most of you use for your store? Weight-based shipping is the answer. Okay, that's all that really matters. I was just trying to give you a little bit of an explanation. But most of you should use weight-based shipping. Weight-based shipping. So these weight-based rates. Now, this is kind of a model that a lot of people use here, okay? Feel free to copy this model. There's like maybe three or four different types of shipping models we'll teach you over the 90 days because there's no one answer that's gonna fit every single person. If you guys are all saying, hey Chris, just give me the exact thing to do. Well, a lot of you might be selling in different ways. There's, th there's gonna be thousands and thousands. At some point, there might even be over 100,000 people going through this challenge, we don't know. So I can't teach one way to do it. But here's something, here's something you can model after. What you can model after is this right here. You can price-based rates, you can add a rate, go to edit, and do something like this. Free shipping on orders over $75. Okay, so let's, let's do this, uh, for example. Edit price-based rate. This will be, um, uh, you can use a combination uh, like this. Edit the price base rate and put in the name. Free shipping on orders over $75. And you know, put in minimum order price. Would be like $74.99 as an example, of course, just an example. No limit max, free sh uh, rate, free shipping rate. No limit max, rate, free shipping rate, okay? So just like that, this, this could be an example right here. And what I'll even do to make this even better for people is on, on the fly right here, I'll just even take a screenshot. Uh, edit price based rate, save, uh, and then you guys will see like this is pretty cool. Watch this in real time right here. I could even do this. I can even actually insert an image, choose an image, desktop, Edit, edit price base rate. Where did it go? Edit price base rate. I don't know why I just downloaded it actually. Uh, let, me, let me save that again. That was funny. I did it. I don't know where it went. I just saw it a second ago. Um, give me one second. Edit price base rate. I want to save this picture so you guys can kind of see this as an example. Um, okay, so what was there? I don't know why it's not getting there. Let's look at it again. Sorry, sometimes, there it is. Okay. Um, so here we go, it was inside of a folder. 
Okay, there you go. See, I can just do this. So it, maybe in the future I'll have like one of our uh, team members go in and put in a lot of screenshots like this if it's helpful. But I just put in the screenshot so you can kind of see what that looks like. So we'll go in and we'll help clean up these documents, get them really good, get a lot of stuff. So that's that's an example. A combination like this. Um, Price-based shipping with one option for orders over $75 to get free shipping. And then you do it like this. You go in there and edit that. And then weight-based shipping for the rest of the orders on your store. Okay, so let's look at this. Weight-based shipping. Here's an example. So we go in. We added one item here, free shipping for order $74.99 up. Now it's going to weight-based uh, rates. You can see here, there's a, a whole realm of them right here, right? And what I'll do is I will take a screenshot of this next. Weight-based rates. You guys can model after this one if you want. There's lots of different styles, weight-based rates. And I'll explain why people use different styles and whatnot. Um, let's use this. Insert image. Choose weight-based rates. And for those that are following along, there you go. And it pulls up, okay? So this is kind of the weight-based rates right here. You've got free shipping, so on zero pounds to zero pounds. So let's explain that. <clears throat> there's, there's essentially two options that this store has to give customers free shipping. Option number one, orders over $75. Okay, minimum order price $74.99 qualifies for free shipping. So number one, orders over $75 get free shipping. Our option number two, any item in the store that weighs zero pounds will get free shipping. Now in a minute, we'll go over and we'll actually cover that. In a minute, we'll go over here to products and we'll actually um, go in. I'll give you a little teaser. We'll actually go in in a minute and you can go into a... Uh, product, an individual product, and we'll go into an actual product order screen right here, and we'll go in and we'll talk about what this means right here, the weight, okay? So we'll go in and we'll talk about, wow, this product weighs 0.07, okay? This product right here weighs 0 0.07 pounds. So in a minute, we'll go in and we'll explain what that is, okay? So you'll be able to see, you, we'll go back and we'll explain how to do that, but you'll see it right here. Whatever a product weighs, will determine how much shipping that product has. So you see that product, we just looked at one, that is 0 0.07 pounds. This, this bracelet right here, life isn't about surviving the storm, it's about learning to dance in the rain. This product right here is a bracelet priced at $1.24 and it weighs 0 0.07. So if you go to the shipping rates, 0 0.07 is right here, $8.95. So they are selling, this, this product is selling for $1.24, but it is going to add $8.95 to that $1.24. So it's going to be a little over $10 for that product. So you're going to collect $10 for that product, um, and then you're going to go buy it from the wholesaler at a fraction of that, maybe a couple dollars. So shipping comes in handy. The reason shipping comes in handy is because like when you, when you go look at an actual product, like if you go to the store and you look at this product, this is tempting right here, $1.24. See, this is tempting. I might go, you know what? This is actually, uh, this is worth $1.24. I'm going to do this. And then they're going to add it to the cart. Okay, there it is. Let me, um, let me go and I can actually delete uh, these other items. Let me delete those other items. Okay, there it is, $1.24. So I'm looking, I'm like, hey, I'm going to buy this for $1.24. And then what's going to happen is when I go check out, it's going to, oh, this one's actually sold out. But when I'm going to go check out, it's going to, once I go and put in my information, it's going to show shipping right here, and it's going to show like $8.95. I, maybe I could do it on another item, but it would show $8.95 because this item weighs 0 0.07. So whatever weight you put for a product, 0 0.07, whatever weight you put, here is where you're establishing how much it is. Now, the reason we do this is because you're going to pay the one price for this product right here, this um, Surviving the Storm bracelet, okay? Surviving the Storm bracelet. Let's say that you wanted to sell that exact product. Let's go see if we can find it really quick. Surviving the Storm bracelet, okay? 
Okay, here we go. There's this surviving the storm bracelet. Okay, so look at all these options. Okay, you mostly see that these are around, they cost around $1.29, and with shipping, it's about $3. Shipping is $2.21, so it's about $3.50. So your cost is $3.50 on this. You have a hard fixed cost. Your fixed cost to this vendor is $3.31. Your fixed cost to this vendor, it's $1.49 for the product, $2.21 for shipping, so your fixed cost is $3.70. Okay, so you see your fixed cost is between three dollars and thirty cents, or three fifty, or three seventy, depending on the on the vendor. So, your cost is let's say three fifty on average. So you can price it at one twenty four, add eight ninety five shipping and handling, and if you do the math on that, one point two four plus eight point nine five equals ten dollars and nineteen cents. So you're collecting $10.19. So let's, let's write this up right here as an example. Example. You're collecting $10.19. What was it? It was um, price was $1.24. Um, shipping was $8.95. So total is $10.19. Your wholesale cost is like roughly $3.50 on average, okay? Your FB ads cost might be like, let's say $3 to acquire a customer. And so your total over, your total expenses are $6.50. Um, so then you're gonna go $10.19 minus $6.50 equals your Profit after expenses per order. Okay, so 1019 minus 650. So I'm gonna use a calculator real quick. 10.19 minus 6.50 equals $3.68. Okay. Okay. Times as many as you can sell. And this was example. This was gonna be the. Um, the example I'm using is surviving the storm uh, bracelet. Example, surviving the storm bracelet on AliExpress. Okay, your price, $1.24, shipping $8.95, total $10.19 that you're collecting from the customer. So you're, the point is, we are discussing shipping right now. So the point is, you have a fixed shipping cost everywhere in the United States. So if you go here to this, to this product right here, your cost is $1.29, but you're gonna go here, and remember if you watch my training, you're gonna choose ePacket. It's gonna deliver in 12 to 20 days to the United States. So no matter where you send it to the United States, no matter where somebody buys in the United States, your cost to ship it to them is $2.21. So since you have a fixed cost to send it to them, then you have to decide how much you're gonna mark that up. So in this, this example with this product, 124, they're charging, this product is charging about the same amount that AliExpress is charging. The only difference is they're charging $8.95 shipping for this product, whereas AliExpress is charging $2.20. So this is an example of just marking up the shipping. So this is pretty cool. You have a product that looks good, $1.24, now it's sold out. That's probably because they had an inventory control on this. But that's, that's exactly how this works. So you need to determine how much in shipping, um, and so you need some sort of methodology here. Products that you choose to weight, like if we change the weight of that product right there to zero, if we just change this right here to zero instead of seven, and we press save, then this product would be free shipping. But that would, that would be bad. $1.24 with free shipping means that we would lose money on every single purchase, okay? But let's say, let's say we wanted to do a different shipping. Let's say we wanted to do, um, Let's say we wanted to charge $9.95 shipping instead of $8.95. We would change this to 0.1 pounds, okay? So we would go here and we would change it to 0.1, okay, like that. Instead of 0.07, we change it to 0.1. If it's 0.1, like that, 0.1 pounds, then it's going to automatically go to whatever your shipping settings say. 0.1 to 0.19 is $9.95 shipping, okay? Now, you're going to give it a name. So the methodology here is... On this site, all the free, uh, free items plus if you're doing anything that you're giving away for free. So what this, what the methodology for this site is, 
if they wanted to give this product away for free, watch this, instead of 124, they're gonna do, you know, zero, okay? It's free. You can make it zero, but then they're gonna charge 0.1 and save, okay? So the idea, the idea here is literally that you can change it. So now we have 0.1, which means it's gonna charge 995 shipping and handling to the customer, but the cost is gonna be free. Okay, and that's kind of like how you can decide to do whatever it is you want to do. You can kind of do it. Look, price, zero. See this? And then you would change the description so it says, it would explain that it's a free plus shipping item. Okay, that's how this would work. You could decide to give this away for free if you want. It's that simple. You can charge $2 for this. Now, you can kind of make any, any mix you want. You know your cost. Your cost here is a, it's, it's going to be $3.50. So your cost is $3.50. And you got to factor in maybe at least a few dollars in ads. So your cost is, let's say, your hard cost is, let's say, like $7, okay? So if your hard cost $7, it doesn't matter. Anything over $7 is kind of like profit. So you got to kind of just play the game. You use shipping to play that game. You go in here and you're like, okay, I could charge $7, okay? Let's say like, let's, let's say I want to charge $9.95, okay? I'm going to charge more than $7. I'm going to charge $9.95 for this, but then I want to do free shipping, that's what I would do. Zero weight, $9.95. That's how I would make this item. It would cost $10 and it would be free shipping. See, because you, you guys see, because I put zero pounds means free shipping. So that's exactly how you do it. I would make it zero pounds, free shipping, the customer pays $9.95. Or I can make this, the customer pays nothing, and this way is 0.1. Now I'm still collecting the same $9.95. Because you remember? Point 0.1 over here, point 0.1 is 9.95. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. As long as I'm collecting the 9.95, it doesn't matter how I collect it. Let me let me give you uh, you know, let me give you two examples of selling the same product for the same price, but in different ways. Okay, okay. Here we go. Here's two examples of selling the same product the same way. One is free, just pay, $9.95 shipping or s and shipping and handling. That's one way. Or well, the other is $9.95 free shipping. Okay? Both options. This is really important for you guys to understand. Both options you collect 9.95 up front and pay the wholesaler. $3.50. Okay? You can choose any number of marketing strategies that work for your products. Okay? As long as you're profitable. Now, let me actually give you a third example. Three examples. Let me give you a third example. Three is any price plus some shipping, okay? And I'm gonna give you like a perfect example, like we'll say maybe you're gonna charge $2 plus $7.95 shipping, okay? Or maybe you're gonna charge $5 plus $4.95 shipping. Or maybe you're gonna charge $7 plus $2.95 shipping. At the end of the day, you are collecting the money for shipping, but you have a flat rate that you're paying somebody else. So it's not a price-based rate. It's not a location-based. It doesn't matter where their zip code is. None of that kind of stuff, okay? Look at this. What is $2 plus $7.95? That is $9.95. What is $5 plus $4.95? That is, see, all of these equal 995 equal 995 equal 995 okay equals 995 equals 995 you see what i'm saying it's all equal whatever you do it, it as long if your goal is to collect 995 cuz your cost is 350 look at these different ways you can do it you can do free charge 995 shipping, or you could charge the full price with free shipping or any combination, okay? 
So if you really want to look at the titles for this, this is actually called free plus shipping. That's what that one is. Okay. This one here is called free shipping, aka uh, retail sales. Okay. And this one here is called combination. Okay. That's it. You're really looking at free plus shipping offers or just regular, you retail the product with free shipping or a combination of those. This is all you really need to understand. See, at the end of the day, your cost, you have a fixed cost to the wholesaler every time an order comes in and then your ad cost will vary. I don't know how to predict your advertising cost, but you better allow yourself some money to be able to predict it. In the beginning, it's okay if you break even or lose money, but eventually in order for you to scale, you have to be profitable. So once you know your advertising cost, let's say your advertising cost was $3.50, then your, your base cost is $3.50 to the wholesaler and your ad cost is $3.50. That means you need to sell for at least $7 or more to break even and generate profit. So then $9.95, you'd be making $2.95 per order profit, which doesn't seem like much. Three bucks doesn't seem like much, but if you're selling 1,000 units a week, that's $3,000 a week, that's 12,000 in profit per month, right? That's what makes this exciting. So. This is the area of a site that most people get caught up on, and here's something you can model after. Now, this, this modeling item here is based on a free plus shipping model. If you're not going to be selling free plus shipping products from your, from your store, um, then you don't need to worry about this. You can just continue to do standard insured shipping um, all the way through. You can actually just set standard insured shipping the whole way through. You don't even have to do this free plus shipping. This free plus shipping is kind of like this site has a lot of products that are free and the user is just paying shipping and that's what this is like. Now, why does the price go up? One free item, so if, if, if the price is zero, one free item is $9.95. What happens if they add two of those items to the cart? What if they add two? Well, you make the weight, you make the weight 0.2 if, if there's, so if, if somebody adds two of this product, the product weighs 0.1, right? If somebody added two of those bracelets, then the weight would be 0.2, the shipping would be $17.95. If somebody added three, the shipping would be $24.95. So you can see the, the shipping starts going up incrementally. You can kind of decide how many free plus shipping items you're going to allow, and the shipping kind of starts to go up incrementally. So you can see here $46.95 in shipping. If they want to get six of those bracelets, you can't just, you have to have something like this, otherwise they'll just pay $9.95. So we'll, we'll do uh, free plus shipping training at a later time. I really just wanted to give you a nice broad overview of it for beginners. The idea is that you have free shipping, zero pounds, standard insured shipping, three different rates so you can decide each product on a product by product basis, what they are. And then you have six free item rates like this and then um, heavy, heavy products. You know, anything that weighs up to 27.7 uh, to 25 pounds charge 99.95. So what they're saying is if they add more free plus shipping items or if they just add heavy items or whatever, it's 99.95 shipping and handling. This kind of prevents people from checking out lots of items. Okay, so there you go. Um, that's how you do that. Let me tell you one more thing about shipping that's important. When you first start your site, okay, when you first start it, and notice there's no shipping rates for the rest of the world. That's because when you're first starting out, you should probably just sell to the United States. Um, you probably shouldn't sell to other parts of the world because you're, you're probably not advanced enough to understand the shipping and, and have things set up. It's better to start just by selling to the United States. Okay. Um, so let's, let's talk about this. Okay. Additional shipping methods. There's going to be one right here. Enable third-party calculated rates at checkout. Okay, enable third-party calculated rates at checkout. This one right here is um, turned on. Okay, this one is like, it's, it's kind of like, it doesn't look like this. It kind of like starts with like a UPS one or whatever. Change the options. Um, I think this was from the last webinar we did. If you guys remember, we were showing how to downgrade and upgrade plans. So I think I got to go back in and up if I want to show you this. But in the last webinar, if you recall, we're downgrading and upgrading plans from Ecom Tutor. But this right here is, see this little truck? Change your settings so that you get the one with the truck. You want to turn this off so that it's off by default and you want the little truck. Okay? So you don't want this shipping method. You want the one with the truck right here. 
Okay, so just make sure you see this. If you don't see this in your shipping settings, change your plan, change, not your plan, but change your settings right here. It should say to be able to turn this off so you don't see the truck, okay? Now, another thing, your packages. You're gonna have this saved package. This sample box is gonna be saved here. Go ahead and, and, and click on it and edit the weight to be zero. Your, your weight might start out, like it might say something like 4.4 or something like that. By default, make this zero and save it. Make this zero weight right here, okay? Because you're not, you're not charging people for your boxes and you're not using those other shipping rates. You're using a drop shipper, so you have to turn off these settings. So essentially, all you need to do is you need to set up some shipping prices. We can talk more about it. Make sure you're only selling in the United States and you wanna go in here and have this set to zero and have your carrier uh, settings turned off. Okay, just like this. Okay. Um, you can uh, you can go in here and you can edit this if you want. You can go in and you can see that you can uh, you can have some countries that you're selling to. If you're a little bit advanced, just start in the United States. It's a little bit easier, um, and you'll do a little bit better that way. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you there. All right, that's shipping. Let's go through taxes. Um, you know, all taxes are included in my prices. You're just going to check that. Check that. This should this stuff probably comes uh, default. Okay. So you're gonna have this checked. Um, you're gonna notice this is just nothing right here, 0% all the way down, depends on the country, okay? Pretty simple, check, check, nothing else, zeros all the way down. Notifications, um, you don't really have to go in here and customize this stuff, although you could. Um, generally speaking, you just kinda of have it set like this, okay? Gift cards, we're going to get in that later. File, sales channels, and account. You don't really need to know anything about that. Um, I don't need to go into any of this really. At this point, it's not really that important. This is where you add staff accounts. This is a site I'm working with a couple people on. And that's how you're going to work that. There's your settings. Okay, that's how we just covered the whole settings section. Let's go down here to apps. Okay, you should all have this app right here installed. 90-Day Challenge by Techademics. This app is what allows you to be able to participate in the 90-Day Challenge. Assuming you have the staff accounts, and, and that 90-day challenge set up, you should be able to participate. Okay, these are just some examples of apps that are already installed on this store. A bunch of these. So when you start, you really don't have any apps. You're gonna start with this app, okay? Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna visit the Shopify app store. You can go over here to the Shopify app store. And this is where you're gonna be able to get applications, not like iPhone apps, but applications for your Shopify store. So if there's ever anything that you want to do, um, you can go and you could get uh, stuff here. Like look at this one, last second coupon. It's, it starts free and then they sell you up to $5.99 a month. You can display a discount offer or coupon code in pop-ups before a customer leaves your store empty-handed. Convert window shoppers into your customers. So if you're worried about a bunch of customers bailing and you wanna give them a coupon, you can get this free or pay for it and that'll give them a coupon. You know, here's a Wheelio, world's first interactive exit uh, pop-up, lead generation on steroids, and that's $14.92 per month. Credible, beautifully uh, display recent orders on your store, turning shoppers into buyers, you know, just like that. This is $10 a month. Um, smart email marketing, predictive email marketing, bulk campaigns, blah, blah, blah. So you see, free to $39 a month. So these are all different. Let's click on one. You can go and you can learn about it. Here's an app, Credible. You can see it's got reviews. You can read those. It's got some bullet points. How does it work? Does, you can design your message. You can style it, display it. You know, looks great, whatever. Here's some reviews. You can kind of go through and, and, and kind of read what people say. A lot of times they'll have a video here. These are some screenshots that kind of show it in action. You can kind of look at the screenshots and you can learn more. See, it's got this little pop-up here. A customer, whatever, just purchased this one. Um, and it kind of shows, here's a customer just purchased that one. And there's another one, a customer just purchased this one. So you'll notice on, on this site here, the Lust House, you'll notice um, there's an app. And you'll notice, if you noticed it, little pop-ups were happening here on the left. That is controlled through apps. So when you're, when you're going through like the site, okay, when you're going through and you're looking at certain products, and you're here on this product, you'll notice some things that maybe this site has that maybe your site doesn't have. This is a free shipping bar up here. That's an app. 
Um, this, see, look, here we go. Look at this just popped up right here. There's an app that's basically popping up. Someone in Modesto just purchased this item and you can actually click on it. So the customer might've been looking at another item and saw this. That's an app that does that. Here's an app right here. Hurry, offer in soon. It's got a four minute countdown right here. And then there's another thing popping up for another product. See this kind of stuff here. These are like apps that you can get that do this kind of stuff, okay? So you can basically get, you can download and install apps on your store. Some of them are free, some of them cost money. We'll do a whole entire training just on apps, but that's what this is. This is the Shopify app store. And if you wanna get this app and use this app, it's gonna cost $10 a month, but you're gonna get your first seven days for free, okay? So that's what the app store is. You can go and you can, you can look at all these categories. There's stuff you could do here you know, customer service, let's say, and then it'll show you a bunch of different things you can do here. Um, you can go to the prices, here's some free ones, you go to free. But just because something's free doesn't mean it's free. See, free, up to $10 a month. So you'll notice this one is just free. And this one is free up to $10 a month. This one's from $0 a month, so this one might have more. Um, free to $15 a month, free to 12. You're really looking at the ones that just say free. Free really means it's just really free. So you can install some apps if you want. Um, you can sort by the most popular or the newest one. So here's popular ones in the category of customer service where I go to all, you know, sort by popular. Here's a bunch of really popular ones in each category. Um, and then there's made by Shopify, all kinds of stuff. See what I'm saying? There's like newest ones in case you're wondering like what's brand new coming out. And you can kind of learn a, a little bit more about this. Like I know in the group, some people were asking about are there, what's a good print on demand for the UK? Well, look at this, new. Print motor, and it says European print on demand service. See that? And it's new, there's no reviews yet. So I can't, I can't validate that this will be any good, but you could at least go check it out. Print motor, European print on demand drop shipping service. Start selling without upfront cost, fast European production. See, I don't know if it's any good or not, but you could look into it. European fulfillment, and you can kind of go and, and look into the company. And you could see, do I want to you know, do this. They have posters, um, t-shirts, hoodies, zippers, that kind of stuff. You can go to their homepage and kind of look at them. Print motor, on demand, printing, posters, cards, t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, much more. Um, you can kind of look into it, okay? That's an example of how you're going to find apps to be able to, uh, to be able to do stuff. We just found it in like new ones, okay? And you can go be like a guinea pig since they're new and you can maybe try using them, okay? So these are apps Sometimes they're free, sometimes they cost money. Okay, so that's how apps work. Um, if we were to go back here, you can kind of see some apps that are installed here. Okay, so one of the apps installed is this thing called Abandonment Protector. And what this does is this sends out emails um, all about, you know, when people go to the shopping cart and then they don't complete their purchase, okay? Um, you know, here's these new features, get to know new features. Let me go back. If I got it, it's forcing me to see this real quick. So let me say, got it. Okay. So anyways, it's forcing me to, to see this or whatever. Um, but it gives you basically the ability to be able to see stats. It gives you the ability to be able to see completed orders, abandoned orders, recovered orders, where they are, what's happening, what the recovery rate is. It's a really cool tool that shows you like a lot of stuff. And you can set up um, abandonment emails. You know, you can set up like, emails going, okay, the first email I want to send is this, the second email is this, the third email is this, you know, and you can kind of see like if you're recovering rates, like look at this, this is, you know, they're recovering orders here, you know, so template one is it's recovered a few, a handful of orders, a handful of orders just in this time frame in the last month and you could always change this to like all time, let's, let's go back to like 2016 and see if it's apply and you can kind of see like how these perform over time, you know, 264 orders were saved off of this first email that went out. So these are people that bailed. Just by having this tool, 264 orders were saved, then 101 orders were saved from the second email, and 68 orders were saved. So if you look at like how effective something like this is, let's go 264 plus 101 plus 68 equals 433 orders. So 433 orders were saved just from this app. What this app did is it sent out. So literally, just this app alone, Abandonment Protector, um, you know, 400 plus uh, 
orders were saved. Okay, 400 plus orders were saved. So this right here is $8 a month. So on this one site, over 400 people that said no in the shopping cart, we, they were able to follow up and save over 400 of those. Well, let's say that the average profit was just, I don't know, um, $3 profit. Just say on a low end, 400 times $3 profit is $1,200. $8 a month to make $1,200. Would you say that was a pretty good use of an app? Yes. So there's, there's going to be apps like that that you're going to be able to get a return on your investment on. And the way you're going to get a return on your investment is um, to have a lot of orders, really. If you've only got like five people who have abandoned your cart, obviously, this isn't as effective. But once you start getting orders, you need to start looking at where you can spend money to make money. Spend $8 a month to make $1,200 or $1,500 or $2,000, whatever it might be. So that's an example of an app that, um, that does well. Here's a contact form if you want people to contact you, uh, a receipt uh, type form to give you beautiful receipts, custom cat, like a print on demand fulfillment service. Uh, this allows you to be able to edit a bunch of your orders quickly. Um, this gives you that social boost, um, like little icon that pops up on the bottom. Let me show it to you. The one that we were talking about. There's now there's lots of different ones, okay? But um, you know, when, you were, when we were on the site and you saw this little thing on the bottom that showed a picture and it said, you know, so-and-so from California just purchased this product about an hour ago, that little notification thing, um, this is a very popular company that was doing it. And, but look at the price though, you know, $19 to $49 per month. So you might, um, you might not want to start with $19 a month, but my point is, when your store starts making money, then you might want to say, where can I spend a little bit of money to make money? So like, if you can spend $19 to, uh, per month to make an extra $1,000 per month, then that is a great return on investment. Um, and and that's, that's how you can do it, right? So it's just an example. And this one gives you a free trial for seven days. You can always try it. You can always try free trials. So I'm not saying to spend a bunch of money, but it's just, you've got you to gotta look at your site as like, an investment and you want to reinvest profits. Here's a free plus shipping um, app. Here's that free shipping bar up on the top. It shows like, you know, if you go to, if you go to one of the products um, up on the top, free shipping. So here's that FOMO app working. Here's that free shipping bar working right there. So you can start to see here, right? This, that free shipping bar. You can look at the view, view the details there, um, view it in the app store and you can kind of see like, free shipping bar and this one you can start at zero dollars per month and be able to get a shipping bar like that and be able to customize it so you can start to see these apps and see what uh, see what can work and then Hurify countdown timer that's this um, countdown timer right here so like see this hurry offer end soon what this does is this sort of provides like social proof it, or not sorry not social proof sorry that's what this does this provides um, urgency. It provides urgency. So what this does is this basically starts with like, you could start with like counting down from five minutes and then once it zeroes out, it'll count down from like an hour and go back down. What this does is this little thing, people, when they see something counting down, they, they, they are, they're more likely to take action. And you might end your offer at any time. You saw one of the earlier products we showed was already sold out, so yes. It is a legit thing that you might be able to at any time. You don't know if the if the vendor's gonna have um, supply issues. So it is real. At any given time, you want the right to be able to take it down. You're only guaranteeing that that this offer is good for an hour. And the reality is, is that it's true. You cannot guarantee your stock because it's not your stock. If you had ten thousand of these in your own warehouse, then yeah, you could guarantee it. But you can't guarantee. So what you're basically saying is that you're only guaranteeing that this offer is good for an hour or for five minutes or 10 minutes. That's all you're willing to guarantee. The offer, could, you're, you're giving yourself the right to end this offer at any time. So these little countdown timers work really well. That's called Hurify. We'll give you, show you that one real quick. And you can start to see these, these apps that you can install in your store. This one is $6.99 a month. There's a countdown timer. Now, are there alternatives? Are there free apps? Are there scripts you could do? Yes. There's usually uh, free alternatives. There's usually more expensive alternatives. And Techademics will be building apps for you as well. So sometimes you might see something at $6.99 a month, but then we'll have a version of it for free that you'll be able to use. But you can always just cancel one of these other apps at any time.
uh, MailChimp because you got to have like a way to be able to um, email your list. And so if you have an email marketing provider, MailChimp's a really good one. Order limits. So if you have like, if you're selling free plus shipping items and you only want to limit like maximum you can add to your card is four items per or like if you're giving away a free necklace, you don't want somebody to add a thousand of them to the cart, right? So you can limit how many um, that people can do. Uh, Reamaze, retarget, retargeting, Shopify app, all kinds of other. Okay. That's kind of a tour of the Shopify app store. And you'll notice Techademics will be releasing a lot of them. So hopefully that was a good understanding of that. Okay. So now you've got your online store. Okay. That's this right here. Sales channels, online store. So this is where you choose a theme for your store and then you can customize your theme. So let's go over here and visit the theme store. This is how you design your site and you get it looking good. Okay. You can go here to themes and you can see all these different themes. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. So you can go over here to free and you can just go through and, and browse the free themes, you know, and kind of find a find one. Now, here's, here's my big advice. Let's go back to this document because I know it's mostly just a, uh, a lot. Okay, so let's go down to theme, theme choices, free versus paid, okay? Um, here's some advice I wanna give everybody, okay? This is some basic advice, okay? Um, if you are using Facebook ads to drive traffic, then most of your users will only see your individual product page on mobile, okay? So don't worry so much about your theme. This is where everybody gets crazy. Um, Amateurs will spend hours upon hours getting their theme perfect. This is only helpful if you have multiple sources of eye traffic, okay? It's, that's only really like when that's beneficial. It's only beneficial most of us. Or if you are highly focused on building a brand image for your store, okay? Which 99, so let's just put that, 99.9% .9 of you are focused on Facebook ads to individual product pages, which is the beginner strategy, okay? Facebook ads to individual product pages. So when you are looking at themes, so when you are looking at themes, Focus on individual product pages and focus on how it looks when viewed from a mobile device, okay? That's my best advice for all of you guys. So many people don't get that. It's really, really important. So let's, let's say that you really like this theme here. You're like, oh my God, this looks amazing, okay? And you look at this, you're like, wow, this looks really amazing. Let's view the demo. And you're like, you're like, this store right here looks perfect. This is, I really like this. Oh my God, my customers are gonna love this. Look at, look at, I love the way these six blocks are, are put together like this. I love, I love all this. Okay, you're like, oh, I love this, love this, love this. Okay, now it is a good theme. Will some of your people see it on desktop? Yes. That being said, is what you would actually do is this, okay? Now, by the way, we're going in here, in case some of you are asking themes, and we're going here to visit themes. Sorry, I saw several comments saying, how did you get there? Go to, go to on your thing, click the world thing, online store, themes, visit theme store. Okay, that's how you got here. So we're previewing a theme. Here's what you wanna do when you're previewing a theme. Find an individual product, okay? Find a product on there, like look at something, whatever the product is, okay? And then go over to the mobile. So let's go back and let's choose one that, uh, and then we'll go back to the homepage here. Look, jumpstart, free, and you can start with this theme, okay? You can view the demo. So that's, that's how we got there. I'm, I'm looking at all these questions going, slow down and where did you get there, okay? I went to Shopify themes. Let me go back one. I just, somehow, I don't know where I lost people there. I'm getting a lot of comments saying that it was, uh, they didn't know how I got there. Let's just do this, let me just do this again for you. I don't, I don't like anybody being lost. Okay, 
you're, you're on your, let's say you're on your home page right here. Okay, this will take two seconds. We'll get right back there. You go to online store, themes, and then you click visit theme store. That's all I did. And I think where I lost people was I clicked on free. See how there was this right here? What I did was I scrolled down and there's free, there's paid. You can sort it by all these things, price, low to high, all this kind of stuff. I just clicked on free. So sorry if I did that fast. Choose a theme, browse all free themes. That's where I got here. Okay, do you get it? That's how I got to this page right here. Thank, hopefully that helped. So you can see this is free, free. Okay, this one has three styles. So then all you do when you, you click on one, like Venture, you just click on one and then it's gonna say free. And there's three styles included. There's the snowboard style, the outdoor style, or the boxing style. Okay, you can install it anytime you want, but first you're gonna view the demo. So here's, here it is. I'm gonna view the demo and you're gonna see what it looks like on desktop. What I'm saying is go to an individual product. Like let's go to this punching bag. There's the, cate there's the, the, the category punching bags and let's go to an individual one, view. This is what's called an individual product page, okay? This is an individual product page right here. Now, it's got the individual product. What I'm saying to do is click this mobile button, okay? This right here is what your, where you're driving traffic. Do you see what I just did? I clicked this. This is how you're gonna decide if you like a theme or not. What most people are gonna see your theme as, they're gonna see this little hamburger icon right there that basically has these, these things coming through like that, okay? That's what they're gonna see right there, okay? Then they're gonna see your logo, and then they're gonna see the shopping cart icon. They're gonna see your product image, they're gonna see your product name, your price, any sort of uh, variations of your products that you have, and then they're gonna get the ability to add it to the cart, okay? And that's really what they're gonna do. Once it's added, this is gonna pop up, they're gonna view the cart, and they're gonna check out, this is what the shopping cart page is gonna look like. It's gonna show that they have this. They're gonna check out right here. And this is a demo site. And then they're gonna see this page here, okay, which is the standard Shopify site. That is the experience that your customers are gonna go through with your traffic. So what happens is all of us get excited about this, right? We get excited about, we go here and we, we, preview, the, we preview the theme from desktop. And we're like, oh my God, this looks so amazing. It looks professional, it looks all stuff. We're like, oh, I can't wait to have my stuff like this. That's cool, but that should not be your first choice for theme. You should go preview what your theme looks like from a mobile stance, and that's gonna help you choose which theme you wanna use. Now, that being said, Shopify is professional, and all of these themes work. So all you have to do as a beginner is go to the Shopify theme store, click on free, Browse these free themes right here and just simply choose one. That's it. That's all you have to do. Just choose one. It's not that big of a deal. The store that I'm showing you right now uses this one right here, Brooklyn Theme. Okay? It's not that big of a deal. You might have liked that one that I was on better. Go for it. Use one. I would suggest using a free theme to start with. Don't go for a paid theme until you're making money and you're getting a little bit better. So that's how themes work. Once you've installed the theme, it's going to show up here and you have the ability to customize it. So you can click on customize, and what Shopify allows you to do is without needing to know any code, you're able to go in here and you're able to design your site. You're able to, to design your store. So everything is based on sections, okay? You can start with like colors. You can start with, you know, what colors you wanna make stuff. See how this background's white? You can start with colors. You can go in here and you can change things around, you know? You can make that background red. You can make the background black. You can make the background yellow. See how that works? Or you can make the background white, okay? So see how this text is black? You can go in here and you can start changing stuff. And if you're not sure what happens, you're like, what happens if I press this black? Just kind of, you could always copy. If you're not sure and you don't want to mess it up, you could always copy whatever's in there and then go play with it for a little bit. Let me see. And you're like, uh, do I like it? Like, I can barely see that bright blue. Let me make it, ooh, I like that color. Okay, now you got a new color. That was the old color and there's the new color. Okay, but if I if I wanted it back, I could just paste that old one that I that I copied. So that's what you can do. You can go in and you can mess with your site and decide kind of what you want things to look like as you're kind of browsing through and you're kind of seeing things. You can go through and you can click on things. They got you all the colors. So that's how the colors are going to work. Typography is going to be kind of like all this stuff. So right now it's Arvo, 
You can change that to Arvo Bold. You notice it got a little bit darker, okay? You can change that to Crimson Text, and you'll notice it's loading, and then it changed it a little bit. So you can kind of just go through, and you could basically go and change a bunch of loading, go and change a bunch of different fonts, a bunch of different stuff, and you can start to see, you know, how things look, what things look like, what different things you want. And sometimes you have to save for it to show up. So it refreshes and shows you a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to leave it there. And sometimes you have to do it. So it's only changing the headings right now. And then you've got the accent text. You've got the body text. So if we go down. You've got the body text. So if you're not sure, just remember what it was, Avant Garde, and then just change Gil Sands. And you'll, and you'll start to notice things, things change, right? So you can kind of go in and you can kind of see what each thing is and how, and how it works. And you can start to go look at each one. And you can start to see what changes. So you see these titles right here? A Mother's Love is Universal with Lato. We can go down here to like PT Sands. And it kind of changes a little bit. We can go right here to Big Castlon and watch it. That's changed right here. And then you can kind of go from 16, go to 17, make it a little bit bigger, go 16 down to 15. Sometimes it changes more than others. So it got a little bit smaller. So you can kind of just figure out whatever, whatever works for you, okay? So you can kind of like go and, and play with what you want, but don't spend much time doing it. That's what a lot of people spend a lot of time. You can decide you want to capitalize. That's This is set to capitalize everything, italicize. All the stuff is there, okay? So you can kind of go in here. Typography is like the fonts. You got fonts, you got colors, your header. You can upload custom stuff here. Um, you'll notice this is just has a text logo. A lot of you don't even need a logo, just a text logo. So you can have um, a custom icon if you want. Right now, this just uses the no icon. You can kind of put in an icon. Not important, but you can do it if you want. Um, you can see like how your homepage works. This is like a slideshow that you can do. Uh, there's different options. What you can do, you can show your featured products. So you could have a slideshow. You could have featured products as your um, homepage. So right here, if I go to the homepage, I could have it start with this. See, right to my featured products. Or I could have it start right to featured collections. So if you create collections of all your products, it could start like this. So you could change your homepage, featured content, depending on what you have. Okay. Um, so if you have nice big graphics and you like the idea of your store looking like a big, kind of like professional store, you could use a slideshow. If you're just you just really want to go straight to products, you use featured products, just like this. It'll drive people right. They'll come to your store and they'll see they can start shopping. So you have control over this. You see what I'm saying? You have control over each of these sections and what you want to do as you go down with, the, with this, what you want to do. So you've got your slider, then you've got your featured collections, then you've got your featured products, okay? Slider, featured collections, featured products. But you can go in here and maybe do like slider, featured products. So it goes right from a slider to featured products. See that? Then it goes right down to featured collections. You know, you can really mess with this. Or you could just do none, which means I've only got three things that are happening. You could do none again, and it would only show two things. You have full control over how your site looks. And notice there was no code needed. So it makes it really simple. Okay? Then if you want to edit the actual slider up here, you can tell how long you want it to, to go. Like I might, maybe you want it to go faster. Every five seconds then, you want that image to change. So you kind of go like 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, and then it would change. Now, I don't know if it's gonna automatically do it right now with me on here, so maybe it didn't do it in real time, but it does change. Um, so you got slide one, you enable it, and you kind of can choose like what you want to say, welcome to the Lust House, slide, slide one. Um, explore our store, that's the button, and that's the collections. Then you go slide two, you would enable this one right here, and this is this, is this slide right here, and you can do the same thing. Welcome to the Lust House. So you can actually change. Welcome to the Lust House. You can change like slide two um, where you can find um, the best music products. Okay. So you can kind of change this. So you can make it, you can kind of start to set and change things. If we wanted to save this, um, you can go in and you can change it. So now this, look at this, where you can find the best music products. So it'll say like, Welcome to the Lust House. Like, and you can kind of see what it looks like full screen. And you can set it so that every five seconds it'll change. And then you can set it, look, where you can find the best music product. So you can like kind of tell a story if you wanted. So you have the ability to be able to go in here and change all these. Okay? So let me change that back real quick. Welcome to the 
uh, welcome to, sorry, welcome to the Lust House. Okay. So you can kind of change these and kind of make it, you can show where it should link to the collections or you can link it direct to the products, you can link it anywhere. Then you get a third image, 1200 pixels required. So because of white image, you can just go find white images, there's plenty of them, and you can have them rotate. There's another image, you can literally have all this stuff rotate. Okay, so that's what's called a slideshow. And it's just right here, that slideshow. Then you can go into featured collections and you can choose um, what you want the collections to be. See, the first collection is Lust. The second collection is earbuds and headphones. The third collection is wall art. And then you can go right here and you can actually go edit that collection. And so it'll take you right to the section of your site where you can basically say what it's called and put in a picture of it right there. So you can call, like if I wanted to call this, let's say, headphones and earbuds, I would do so just like that. And then I would go to save, okay? Headphones and earbuds, okay? So that's like basically, let me see if it'll just go if I refresh it. But that's essentially how, you, so right now it's earbuds and headphones. So I go down here to feature collections. It changed to headphones and earbuds. See, I swapped it. So that's how you can kind of decide. You can create an image and then when somebody clicks on that, it's going to take them to their actual collection of all the products that you've added to that collection. And of course, you can go in there anytime you want and you can go into your products and you can just basically go find like a product and you can decide like what collection you want to add it into, okay? So you can go in here and you can basically add it into headphones and earbuds right there. All I got to do is check that. And now this product right here is added into headphones and earbuds. You just go in there, you can create collections. Uh, you, can, you can go into your, your section right here, you can create them. And then you go in here and you add them. So now if I add this item, it will show up on this page here. That's how simple it is, okay? So you go, anything that has to do with headphones and earbuds, you're going to put in that category. And that's kind of what you do. Let me exit that one out. Okay, so that's how things show up there. And you can kind of decide how you want them to show up. Featured, uh, um, featured products, so if I go down, these are all, these are all my, um, let me go back to my homepage. So then you have featured products. So I can go here to featured products, and I can decide how I want this stuff to be displayed. You know, I can choose all those kind of options right there. Okay, featured content, I can decide how I want to display it, go right there. Product page, collect, uh, collection page, shows it as a grid product page, let's zoom, you can do cart page, you know, how you want to look, you can go in here and you can mess with everything, you know, social media, you can go in here and you can add all your social media accounts if you want, um, you can allow all that, there's just cool stuff you could do, you can check out page, you know, you can put up a logo, you can do anything you want there on the checkout page, so that's kind of like how you work with your theme and your general, and your general settings right there, and then you can go in section, so it's pretty easy, you just don't get carried away. That's essentially it, right? You essentially can go in there and you can go in here and you can mess with you can mess with settings and you go in here and you can edit them. Now, there's a lot more we can get into. I don't really feel like really getting into that, but there's a lot more that you can actually do uh, without getting into it too much. Um, there you go. <laughs> Just wanted to give you some basics. So that's the theme section, and that's where you kind of can find a theme, customize it, work on it. Okay. Then you've got a blog. You can write blog posts if you want. They're not required. And we'll do entire trainings on blog, post it, blog posts. Then you've got pages. You can put like, you know, all your pages, your privacy policies, return policies, um, about us and whatnot. Then you've got navigation, okay? So you have the main menu, the footer menu, and then custom menu. So like, let's, let's go look at these. So let's go to... Um, Let's go to the store and let's look at the front page of the store here. Okay, so you've got your the name of your store there. That could be your logo too. So this right here is, if you look at this, this is your main menu. Home, catalog, lust, pleasure box. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, home, catalog, lust, pleasure box. Home, catalog, lust, pleasure box. Okay, so that's what you do here. You go to your main menu and you're basically, it's your main menu and you're choosing what you want it to be, and you can add a menu, you could add another one, right? Home, they could do like, um, contact us, and you could choose what you want it to do, where do you want it to go, okay? Or in this case, like, lust blog, let's call it the lust blog, let's just call it the blog, 
then you can go here and you can link it right to your blog. Okay, and you can select a blog, let's call it, link it right to your news blog. So you can have multiple different blogs if you want. So just like that, save the menu, that's how easy it is. No coding needed, you just add a menu item, then you come over here, and you got home, catalog, lust, pleasure box, now you got blog. See that? There was no coding needed, I just added it really quick and it just linked right into this news section. Of course, there's no blog post written, but that's how you could have a blog if you want. And if you don't want the blog, you just go bink and save, and it's done. So it's really easy to decide what you want on the top, where you want it to go, what you want to happen, okay? Now, if you want to have, and then of course your catalog, you could choose where you want it to go. Now, if you want to have, um, if you want to go in and you want to create like sub-navigation or whatever, you can do that as well. Like you can create Lust, and you can go and you can like choose all these sub-navigation items. So. An example is, look at all these sub-navigation items from the Lust category. So you got Lust, and you got necklaces, bracelets, rings, sunglasses, so that was all here. And what, what was happening is basically, you create the Lust, the Lust handle, and this kind of explains what that is, so you don't need to worry about it. But you got Lust, it's called Lust, so whatever your, that's, that's just the theme of this song. You might call this like, um, whatever category, whatever drop down you want up here. So you might have like, special offers or deals or free offers or sports or whatever so whatever category you want if you want a drop down here's how you do it you create a menu called lust and the handles lust and then you go and you choose all the menus and what collection it's going to go to so you choose necklaces that would go to collection necklaces bracelets would go to collection bracelets rings would go whatever collections you've made and you're going to put them all in like that so if you go back to your navigation this right here explains how you can create drop-down menus. So you can read it, review it, and it'll show you how in this video, okay? So if you want those drop-down menus just like that, read it, review it, and do it. The, the main thing you need to understand, uh, the main takeaway, is that right here, this, um, this lust right here, as long as you have that handle lust, you should be fine, okay? It'll, it'll pull in there. So you basically can go and review how to be able to do this, how to be able to do drop-down menus. Okay, it's not that difficult. There's no coding needed or anything. You can add menu items, you can really delete them, you can do anything you want. Pretty simple. Okay, then you have your footer. Okay, so you have the main menu, and then it's got a drop, it's got a drop down here and a drop down there. Then you have the footer, about us, return policy, this and that. So it's with the footer menu, you know, you're auto-generating these pages. And so you want to go in here and you want to have all these. What that means is that down here on the bottom of the page, you've got all these documents. Okay. The reason this is good is because if you're going to advertise on Facebook, Facebook requires these. So it's important that you have all these auto-generated because Facebook requires them. So you're going to want to auto-generate them, click them, and make sure that they show up in the footer if possible. The way to do that is to go to navigation, uh, menu items, you're going to create a footer, a footer menu, and you're going to have all these here. A footer menu is generally created already, but if not, just call footer menu, footer, and then start typing these in. And, you know, look, worst case, you can delete them, you can add them. It's not that difficult. That's how navigation works. All right, domain names. So if you go to domain names, what you've got to do is you've got to choose a domain name for your site. Now, a lot of you use different, um, a lot of you use different domain registration companies. Uh, let me put this down in here. Domain names. I recommend using GoDaddy for domain names for your store, okay? The reason is that it's the simplest to use and easiest for us to ensure it works properly, okay? And there are coupon codes to get domains for very cheap at GoDaddy online. So first, let's talk about the coupon codes. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to basically go to Google and you're going to type in like, try something like this, like GoDaddy coupon um, 2017, but then add like, so here's a bunch of coupons, GoDaddy coupons 2017, but then when you start seeing like, you know, all, all these things really, you know, look right here, .com domains for only 99 cents, what you're going to do is you're going to try these coupons. Okay, so you're going to try it, right? You're going to show the coupon code, and there it is. You're going to copy this coupon code. Okay, it's copied. And then when you're checking out at GoDaddy, you're going to buy one domain name, 
only one domain name, and you have to log into a GoDaddy account or create a GoDaddy account. Once you log in or create it, you're going to add that coupon code, and it won't always work, okay? It's not always going to work. Now, when I clicked that, it opened up GoDaddy in a new window, and it's going to give this affiliate credit for that sale, okay? So that's why they're doing that. Retail, retail me not whatever's offering that. And it shows you can get a 99 cent domain, but you see that asterisk? That asterisk, I don't know if it explains it down here, but that asterisk means that it's only gonna be on a, on a new purchase. So just because it says it's gonna give you a 99 cent domain doesn't mean it's gonna give you one. Because if I type this in right now and I say chrisrecordisawesome.com, search, it's gonna say that name is available and it's only 99 cents. But here's the thing, that does not mean that it's 99 cents. See, it still has that asterisk. That does not mean that it's 99 cents. I can add it to cart. And it says, we can give you only one domain for 99 cents, but feel free to add others. That still does not mean it's 99 cents. Okay, I still gotta continue to the cart. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna try to sell me a bunch of stuff. You gotta choose, you gotta choose no thanks on this first one, no thanks, and then you have to uncheck this, okay? So you choose no thanks, then you uncheck this Go Central website, and you make sure it says no thanks. It's, these are, this is called upsells. Then you continue, it says continue with these, you're really continuing without these. Okay, now I have this, let's go ahead and not worry about this. We can only offer such great promotions to limiting them to one per customer. It looks as if you've already used the type of promotion. See, I told you you couldn't do it. First things first, I've already used it. But for many of you, you will be able to, this will work. I've already used a 99 cent domain. Now, here's what you wanna do. You wanna change this to one year from five years, okay? And then you wanna make sure nothing else is in the cart, okay? So this is, this is not in the cart, but this is, sometimes they sneak other things in the cart. So now I've got this thing for one year. This is the actual price I'm gonna pay right here. Now, if this coupon code worked, then it would adjust this price right now. But see, it didn't work because I've already used it. So you're gonna try some coupons to see if they work. That one did not work. Okay, now you're gonna go down and you're gonna try maybe another one, 87% off .com domains, right? And we're gonna try to copy that one. Okay, copied. And now we're going to uh, go back to that shopping cart. We're gonna try this one. Paste that one and apply it. And essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the price down. Now, in my account, I've already used pretty much every type of coupon that exists. So what you're gonna do is you're, a lot of you would have got this domain right now for a dollar, for one year for a dollar, okay? So for your store, trust me, GoDaddy's only a dollar if you do this right. There's, there's really no other domain name registrar that's going to beat that. So most of you are gonna be able to get it for a dollar. Now if you can't get it for a dollar, you're gonna go through and you're gonna try to find one. Now, in my personal account that I'm in right now, I've used way, 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 way too many of these things, right? So it's hard for me to find, um, it's hard for me to find stuff that actually works, okay? So I could be here for days trying to find this and I, I don't even know that I will. So you're in, this is just one site. I mean, you might be able to go to, um, you know, keep, keep looking and you might be able to find more, okay? Now one more thing you could do is you can go to Google and you could type in like a specific price, like $2.95 GoDaddy, like that, $2.95 GoDaddy, and try to see what you can find, you know, like, or maybe I'll even do like 2017 for like a fresh one. And you can try to find like April 2017, new coupons, $2.95.com coupon, and it says get a .com for $2.95, off, offer excludes renewals, and then there's like a couple codes here. You know, you could try this site. It's always gonna open up a GoDaddy thing. Don't worry about that. And then, um, so this right here, let's copy that. It's been copied. And then we're gonna try that in the cart. Now, well, even at my level, sometimes these work, okay? But most of the time, it's, it's not gonna work for me in this account. But this is the strategy. I wish I had like a brand new account I just logged into, I could show you. But this is the strategy you essentially would use. I purchased uh, domain names for a dollar. I purchased several for 295. And if you really wanna be a penny pincher, you literally can go through and like eventually you actually end up finding one that like works, okay? Uh, you just kind of go like, watch, I'll do it fast really quick. You just keep going through and you keep applying different things. And if you just go through enough, you're eventually gonna knock this down, okay? So that's the strategy. That's why I recommend GoDaddy. 
okay? Uh, there are coupon codes. Uh, try searching for 99 cent coupon codes. Let's say 2017 and 295 coupon codes. And again, you're looking at a guy who's done this so many times, that's why it's not accepting them. But if you if I was to do this like on your account, probably within like 10 tries, I'd find one that works. Okay? So that's how you're gonna get a domain name really cheap. Now, once you have a domain name really cheap, then what you have right here is you have this ability to be able to connect a domain or buy a new domain. Now you can always buy it here too, it's a little more expensive. So we go here to connect existing domain name, and then I would get up, I'm gonna put, you know, Chris Record is awesome. Dot com, okay. Now, in this case, let me let me connect another name. Let's see if I um, let's go in here. Uh, shoot, let me just show you. I don't even care. I'll show you my account. Go visit my account. I might show you like a I might show you like an actual domain name. You're not supposed to see, but I don't care. Who cares? If you're watching this far, congrats for you. Okay. Um, and we'll kind of go in and we'll look at some, and we'll and we'll basically see if there's maybe like a domain name that could work. Okay. Let's take this one, 101 Social Media Hacks, right here, 101 Social Media Hacks.com. So if I wanted to, I could go like this, 101 Social Media Hacks.com. It's a domain I own in my GoDaddy account, 101 Social Media Hacks. And then look, out, look what it says here, connect to your GoDaddy domain. See how simple this is? That's why GoDaddy is really good. Okay, connect to your GoDaddy domain. And you can just do connect automatically. It's going to bring up this manager, put your domain to work, and then I just press connect. Now, all I have to do is press connect, and 101 Social Media Hacks will be the domain name for my website. I don't want to because I don't want to mess up the existing domain name of this site. But do you see how easy that was? That's how easy it is to be able to add a domain. You literally go there, you buy a domain at GoDaddy first, and then you go to connect existing domain, and you rock it out, and you do that. Now, after you connect a domain, there's all, there's all these different ideas on how you can use it, okay? See, it's already showing up, but I didn't, I didn't actually finish that process. All I had to do was click that. And you could have multiple domains you choose from. After you do a domain, look, it's gonna give me options here. I could be 101socialmedia.hacks.com or www. I usually like to use the short one, thelusthouse.com, instead of all, you can use your primary username, you could use www. or you can use without the www. I like using that one right there, okay? so. That's essentially what you want to do. That's how you're going to set up a primary domain name. And then the last section here with preferences, uh, you can do a title. This is where you can do like SEO. You're going to put in your um, Google Analytics. You can put in Facebook pixel IDs. Now we have the Facebook pixel ID put in in, in code, but you would basically paste your ID here. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff. A notable password page if you wanted. Title, description, your Google Analytics account, um, Facebook pixel ID. That's where you're going to put all this stuff in. This is all part of setting up your store. So if you've done this, okay, if you've done this right, you've gone into your general settings, you've gone into your payments, uh, you've gone into your checkout, um, you've gone into your shipping, your taxes, your notifications, you've gone in, um, got any apps you've wanted, you've gone into your online store and you've got the theme looking the way you wanted, set up your domain name with it, chosen your navigation, your products, preferences, then all that's really left is to add products, okay? All that's left is to add products, really. I mean, at the end of the day, you just got to go in now, you got to have some products, okay? And it's just this simple. You just go to products and you just click add product, okay? And then now you're going to just add a product, okay? Let's, let's just go in and let's find one real quick to add. Just a basic one. Let's add, dun, dun, dun. Let's go, let's add a bag. Let's add one of these, something like that. Let's add, I don't know, top handle bag. We'll look at one really quick and add one. You know, let's add this one right here. Okay, so here's one that's got like the Eiffel Tower kind of graphic images on it, stuff like that. Um, women's large tote bag. So here's a product that I want to sell on on my you know on my store. Now there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, what I'll usually do is um, drag. You can always just drag the images to your desktop. So you can take these images and just drag them to your desktop, okay? You can drag these images, depends on what you're using, um, depends on if you're PC, depends on if you're Mac. There's lots of different ways. I actually even use a, um, there's apps you can even use. Like legitimately, like there's apps like um, 
let me show you an app like Oberlo or Shopify app. These are examples of apps. If you go to the App Store, visit App Store. You can actually use apps to basically go in and, and even add things. You can search for an app like Oberlo, O-B-E-R-L-O. -E you can click on that and you can use this app. And this app right here, easily import products from AliExpress to your store. Or you can use an app like this thing called Shopify app. Shopifyapp.com. Welcome to Shopify app. And then you can log in and you can actually um, use this app right here to be able to import. So if you're looking at my site and you kind of like wonder why things have all this, this is from that Shopify app. All I have to do is click this button right here. I don't think I'm logged into this store, but all I'd have to do is click this button right here. And, um, and I could log into that store really quick and I can add that. I'm not logged in on this. Um, I'm not logged in on this site, so that's not going to let me. But that's all you have to do. You can add products or you can just do it manually. Okay, you can literally just do it manually. So if you go to bags and you go to, let's say, um, women's bags, you can go to the top handle bags, and you go to this purse. Okay, you can go in and you, got, you can add all these images right here. Okay. You can add all of these different images, um, and then you can add a title, okay, like a different, a different title right here. See, it's going to give you a bunch of keywords. You don't want this. You want like a – so if this is going to be your uh, product, here's what I'll do. I'll like – let's do it manually. I'll copy that, and then I'll just paste that in here. So there's, there's what they're calling it. That, that – AliExpress is calling it that product, but I might look at this and go, what is this? A three-piece printed handbook, large – Tote bag, artificial leather, shoulder, messenger bags, female. So I might call it something like this. Women's shoulder bag Paris theme limited edition. So I might do something more professional. Okay, women's shoulder bag um, Paris, Paris themed limited edition, something like that. So now I don't need that anymore. Okay, so that's that's like what I might do. I might that's obviously like a basic. Uh, that's pretty basic, but that's the concept. That's you're kind of finding it. Now you can be, you can basically go here and you can start looking at things about it, right? You can start reviewing information about it. This is all information you could potentially use in your product description. Okay, so these are all the other additional products that they have. These are like you know showing about the designer. It's an over-the-shoulder bag. You could get dimensions if you wanted to see kind of like what these dimensions are. Um, you can kind of see like what it looks like. You can see like a cell phone pocket, interior slot, inner layer zipper. And you might go, okay, some of these look really good. Like some of these, some of these uh, layouts look really good. So then you could just like drag that over to your um, desktop. So what, what you can do is you can like minimize your screen a little bit. You can just drag any one of these over to your desktop. There's a small bag. Just drag them. I don't know if you're able to see it in my screen share, but you essentially just drag them right over your desktop. And then you can figure out like which one's which. There's all four different styles of bags. Um, they got the tower bag, bicycle girl. So you could essentially just drag and drop all these over to your desktop. And you can drag all these images over. And then you have all these images that you're able to use. There's, a, there's these images they're providing for you. Here's a girl that's actually using it. And um, you can basically find any of these images that you want to use. Maybe you know, the high quality fabric, and you just drag all these over to your desktop, okay? So um, you figure out like what, what images work good, you're scrolling down the page, and you're, and you're not only getting images, but you're also getting like, um, you know, the descriptions as well. So you just drag a bunch of images, you can put them in a folder or whatever, and you can also offer a lot of different styles. Like this product right here might have a bunch of different styles, okay? It might have a lot of different styles, a lot of different things, you can learn a lot about it. Okay, that being said, what you can do is you can go over to your product, you can go find products, you can import them with an app like Overload, it's a little bit easier, or, or you can just basically get some information from the page, and you could say, um, you know, this limited edition women's shoulder bag is limited in stock in our store, and um, is only available online. Not, uh, not currently sold in stores. Um, and then you can put whatever information. You can like literally go in and just find some information about it. You know, you go in and figure out like what do you want to say about it. What's some information that makes sense? You know, you could you could 
and also you can actually go to like feedback and you can see people taking pictures of it. So you really could even do, do more. But you can do brand specifics. You can copy all this stuff and then you can, um, you can copy all this stuff, put it in there and start working with it. You know, like brand specifics, um, you know, and you could say, you know, all, all kinds of stuff about it, right? So let's say that if you're looking for ideas for what to say, what I would do is I would basically go to like somebody else's site. I would go to like, let, what are people saying about this product? So you could like go and you could look up this product, you know, a realer brand, three piece printed handbag women. So you can go like to Google and do myshopify.com and you could basically go and like start looking it up. Like what is this? It's a, it's a realer brand, um, you know, small coin purse, Hand, printed handbag, women's printed handbag. So realer brand women's printed handbag. So you can look it up. Site. Oh, sorry, I already did it. Another tab. So. Site myshopify.com. Realer um, women's shoulder bag, and you can see if anybody else is selling it. Okay, sixty-seven thousand results. You can go here to images, and you can kind of see if there's something familiar like this one here. Click on it, and then you can go visit their page. And now you can kind of like see what are they saying about it. And you can start to kind of see what people are saying about the products or even what they're saying about women's shoulder bags in general. I don't know where that one just went. It's right here. Um, and you can kind of see, uh, you know, look, they're just copying the items. So they're basically taking the laser away. They're just copying items. But you can also see like what images did they use. And so if they've used certain images, you could always like drag and drop those. You could just drag and drop these off your screen to your desktop. So you could basically, or you could even like save image as, okay? So you could go find... See how simple this is? You could like go find somebody else's site and you can go, okay, I like this layout. They're using, they're using like one main image. They got six other images. They're just copying like all this stuff over. They're being pretty basic about it. Um, and they're just using the exact title. These people aren't even really trying. Okay? And you can see they've got all the different colors right here. And each, each different color, they're basically showing the different styles, the different colors. Okay? So you can see what other people are doing. So when it's all said and done, you know, you can kind of learn and you can model after others. And maybe that one's too um, generic and so you maybe you want to go through and find, you know, keep going through and finding, see if somebody else does it, you know, really brand. And you maybe don't even copy that one. Maybe you like really look and you say, okay, what are, what are some people saying about other bags? Maybe they're saying something really cool. Maybe they're not. And you can kind of look, like you can kind of go to a different store, visit the page and see if you can get any languaging. See if, see if there's anything good. Now this site's doing the same thing. They're just grabbing and, ex and importing exactly. These people are not selling well. You can tell they're not selling well because they're just grabbing the exact AliExpress stuff and they're just building. They don't even know how to spell clothes. Okay? So you want to find a site that's usually doing well, women's handbags. You can kind of learn how to be able to do it. So you do some research. But once you actually have an idea, this limited edition women's shoulder bags, limited in stock in our store. It's only available online, not currently sold in stores. Um, and then any other details you want to put about it, but whatever. You get your description in there. Um, images, that's where you can kind of go and you can upload these images, all the stuff that you drag to your desktop, you know, you can kind of, you can kind of load them in, um, whatever it is you drag to your desktop, you can load it in if you want and put in an image like that, okay? Um, or you can like, you know, you can go in and you can kind of try to find like what's an image that's going to look really good, okay? So you can upload as many images as you want. There's an image of a woman holding the three bags, okay? Pricing. Obviously, you're going to need to go look at what the product is selling for. Your price is going to be $36.24. You're going to want to price it more. So maybe what you do is you price it at like, you know, $49.95 or whatever, $49.95. Compare it at, you know, $99.95. Um, and then you kind of just go through and you do this. I don't, I don't know that I need, you know, you choose a weight. I don't know that I need to go, since we've gone so long, I don't know if I really want to go too crazy on this. But the basics are you choose a price, compare it. You um, choose what weight. This is going to be in line with that shipping you put earlier. So zero pounds is going to be free shipping, if you recall. Um, so we'll put zero pounds. And then you can go over here and you can add variants. Variants would be like all the different types of um, all the different types that you have if you wanted to do that. And the reason I'm not doing this a lot is because you can use an app like Oberlo. And Oberlo will, uh, or sh in this case, we use Shopify app. Shopify app will bring these all in. Oberlo app will bring it all in. I just wanted to show you what it was like to kind of do it like this. Okay? So on a real basic level, 
You got a title, a description, at least a picture, a price. You've got a weight, and uh, if there's variants, you'll add them. If there's not, you'll delete them. This is what it's going to look like in Google. If you don't like this, you can edit the website SEO, and you can change the title, description, how it's going to look in Google. You can change the URL and the handle. You can change all that. You can just go play with this stuff. You got a product type. You know, in this case, it's not shirts. So I don't know if this site has um, has a category for it. I'll really quickly look and see if they do. But if not, you could even just like, yeah, they don't have bags. Maybe they do shoulder bags. Okay. So product type, shoulder bags, just like that. Vendor, you can put in who the vendor is if you're using a specific AliExpress person so you can know. Collections, you could add this if there was a collection for like bags. You know, you could put that in the collections. I don't know what collections um, would fit for this right here. But that's basically what you would do. You would basically create, create a collection for like bags, accessories, bracelets, fitness, home decor, home page. You would find something that works for it. Um, let's just put it in the wear it collection. I don't know. And then tags, this would be like whatever you want to put. Like this would be like, you know, you can actually view all the tags too and all the different tags you have. But you could basically put like shoulder, bag, you know, purses, bags, whatever. You put tags. And then once you have that, you're going to save it. Once you've got a product, um, you can view it in your online store. And this isn't going to be the most amazing product ever, but look at how simple this is. If you've done this right, you literally have a store set up. You've got a product in it. One simple thing. You've got a title. Normally $99.95. Today it's $49.95. This item's whatever. Here's a description. And they can add it to their cart. And there it is. Um, let's remove this other bracelet. They can add it to their cart and they can go check out. Okay. If you've done it right, uh, you've got a product that you can sell online. You can, co you can continue this product. Uh, a lot of people will add products manually if they want it to look really good. If you, um, you can, you can kind of shortcut by using an app to import. If you're going to use an app to import, the main advice I have is it's going to import like, in this case, it's going to import like this image. You might not want this image with the real or bag right there. It's going to import this title. You definitely don't want that title. When it imports stuff, you want to go in here and you want to change it. Change the title, make it clean, uh, uh, upgrade the description a little bit, and then you might want to look at the pictures and see if you can get better pictures. Um, and then you want to go all the way, you want to make sure you have the right weight. Then you want to go all the way down and edit your website SEO. When you import, it's going to have a URL that's like a thousand characters long. It's going to be like, I'll show you what it would look like. It would look like. This is how long your URL is going to be. It's going to be crazy. Your URL would look like this if you imported it. Okay? Look at that. It would look like products, realer, brand, three-piece printed, handbags, blah, 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 blah. It would look so bad. Okay? So instead of all that, you would just do like women's shoulder bag, you know, something like that. Okay? That's how simple it would be, women's shoulder bag or, or, or women's, uh, women's Paris shoulder bag. You would do like something really, really nice and simple, okay? Women's shoulder Paris bag. And then you would go and create a nice title, a nice description. So that's how you do it. Once you have a product and you got this product and it's saved in your store, then what's going to happen is um, orders are going to start to come in, hopefully, right? When orders come in, you're going to be, um, you're going to have them to be able to fulfill. And what's going to happen is you're going to fulfill them. When an order comes in, you're going to come here and you're going to go place the order from this merchant. Almost like you're, almost like you're just buying, you know? What's crazy is that we'll have to do this on another time because we've been going for two hours and we can't teach everything in three days. But here's how crazy it is. You might collect $50 for this, but then you're just going to go pay whatever, $36, okay? And I might not even sell this product to be honest, but you're, I'm going to sell it with ePacket if I can. But you're going to collect $50 and you're going to go pay $36. So you're just going to come here and you're going to buy this product and you're going to basically enter in all your customer's info and you're going to have an account. You're going to be logged in. Okay, You're going to be logged in your account. You're going to basically order this product from this vendor and ship it to your customer's address. And then in the notes, you're going to tell this vendor that it's a drop shipping order. Okay, You're going to tell them that it's a drop shipping order. So this vendor is a vendor on AliExpress called Realer, okay? And if you need information, you can contact them. But they, they sell a bunch of products, you know, from wherever they're shipping them from. I'm not familiar with this vendor. I'm just using them as an example. 
But they have all of this stuff that you can resell. They are a wholesaler. And you can resell all of these different products, right? So you can learn about all these people. So like, for example, let's say you were in like the horse niche and you wanted to sell like a horse pendant. You can go and you can find like a vendor that's pretty good, okay? Like look at this one, five-star rating, 2,237 feedback from this vendor, Trust, Trust Davis, okay? So you can, you can learn about these vendors and you can basically find good vendors to work with. So you can go and you can look them up and go review them. If, you're, if you want to be more confident when you're new, you can you know, chat with them. You can basically, before you ever even make a sale, you can, um, you can learn more about them. And you can kind of see what products they sell, if this stuff would be good for, you know, for niches, you can get ideas even, just like therapy by looking at them, okay? So you can start to like learn about these vendors and what they do. You can, you can contact them. You can start to feel comfortable. And most of these vendors will drop ship for you, okay? The vast majority of these vendors that are in good ratings will drop ship. All you have to do is you have to contact them. That's it. Go look at all these products this, this one vendor sells. And a lot of times you could just put in the notes, just put drop shipping. Can you, you could say, this is a drop shipped order. Okay? So you can learn. You can basically um, go and you can learn all, we're just browsing vendors. You can become familiar with these people. Okay? You can learn which vendors are good, whatever. You can start seeing what they're doing. You can go and you can look at people's stores, try to find a vendor that's good, try to find someone that's got a good track record. You know, here's a nice like, little horse pendant. You can go see their store. Go to the vendor. Feel comfortable with them because essentially you're going to be representing this person's product and their products. So you can kind of look at them and learn a little bit about their store, learn a little bit about them, contact them if you want. This is, I just want to make you feel comfortable with this process, right? And you'll get comfortable over time. But that's basically what you're doing is you're basically – on your site, you're collecting the money and you're collecting the, the customer's information. Then you're turning around and you are buying the product from this wholesaler and telling this wholesaler in the notes to drop ship it to your customer. And these, these vendors generally know what they're doing. Will there be some issues? Yes. There will definitely be some issues. Okay? So, you know, the reality is, is that sometimes products won't show up perfect. There will always be issues. But I'm just trying to get you familiar with the process and over time, you'll get better, you'll learn more, and you'll be able to go from there. And you're just always looking for like really cool stuff, you know, like you're just looking for like, okay, maybe this like little horse jewelry thing with this little thing from Be Bella Jewelry, you know, this might, this might sell well. And you just kind of go through and you just kind of look for ideas, you know, what will sell well, you know, look at all of this um, jewelry and you kind of go through and look at all their stuff, okay? And you can contact them and ask them questions. Do you drop ship? You know, if, if I'm using ePacket, you know, how long does it take? You can get familiar with them. They'll talk to you. You can ask in the group, um, you know, people, stuff like that. And that's really all you do. You're basically adding, adding products. Orders are going to come in. When orders come in, I don't want to show you their customer information. But you'll basically view the order. You'll copy over the customer information. And you'll go to the uh, AliExpress. And you'll order it. Send it to the customer. And you'll be managing your products. You'll be able to see your customers. You'll be able to see reports of all your stuff all right in here. Okay? So this was a very two-hour detailed tutorial on Shopify. Am I perfect? Of course not. There's always, um, there's always this kind of – there's always going to be different, um, different stuff, right? There's always going to be um, different things to learn. you just got to start somewhere. You just got to start somewhere. So for those that hung with me, um, let's do a couple things really quick. Uh, I'm live right now. Let's do a couple things. If you're watching live, can you do me a favor? If you have questions, ask them as a new question in the group. Okay, go to, go to um, write a post. Ask a new question here. Ask, don't ask the question to me. Ask the question to the group. Now, if you have a question about today's training, Ask it like this. Let me show you um, how to ask questions. Um, questions about today's training. Okay. Um, ask them as their own post in the FB group. 
the 90 day challenge group. Okay. Ask them um, as if other community members would be the ones answering. Okay, like not Chris. I can't sit here for five hours, you know, and do this. Okay, we have other community members that are in there. Okay. So here's gonna be the format. Um, use this format for your questions today. Your format should be Shopify setup question. Okay, like that. And then ask your question here. Shopify setup question. Um, you know, then you then whatever your question is, and say your Shopify setup question might be, um, you know, I'm in the UK. And here is a screenshot of how my shipping settings look different than the day three training. Here is my question about it, okay? Like something like that, whatever your issue is, if you can provide a screenshot or if you can record a little video of your screen showing or whatever it is, that's how you can do it, Shopify setup question, okay? So just do that. Do, if you do it in all caps, you will be able to see it. And then ask your question. The more detailed you are, the more detailed the better. Okay? The more detailed the better. So just like that, that's all you got to do. And it's pretty simple. So that's, that's all you really have to do. People will be in there. They'll be able to answer questions for you. Okay? So... <laughs> All you gotta do right now is ask questions. We'll do our best to be able to answer you. I've been going for two hours. I was thinking about going and doing some Q&A right now, but honestly, uh, I need a lunch break. I've been going for a while. <laughs> you know, I can only talk for so long. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Not every training will be this long. I just wanted the ones in the beginning to be as helpful as possible. If you guys enjoyed this training, could you do me a favor? Could you please let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed this training? Let me know, be as detailed as possible. Let me know if this is valuable for you. We'd love to be able to help you to be able to create um, as much success as possible with your Shopify store. We're here to serve you. Did I get some things wrong? Maybe. Everybody does this thing different. I just, if you guys um, find value in this, this is us serving you. We're trying to do something very, very, very different than the rest of the world is doing. We're trying to be very, very detailed with as much value as possible. Hit the like button and be sure to recommend your friends to the 90 day challenge. We'd love to welcome them into the group. And let's go big with this thing. Okay, if you have questions, ask them as their own separate uh, question and ask them to the community and we'll go from there. You guys, it's been my pleasure sharing with you. With that being said, Chris Record over and out.